Hey folks, so this is going to be a little bit of a different style of video. Um, if you're looking for my normal videos, one is coming, so don't worry, and I don't hold it against you if you just want to skip over this. These are all clips from a single road trip that I took over New Year's. Um, it was a four-day, three-night trip that we took um, where we camped every single night um, in the back of this rented SUV, actually. It's a 2018 Nissan Pathfinder. Um, like I said, it's a little bit of a different style of video. I've, I've tried scenic videos before, but never really worked quite the way I wanted them. They were always a little bit boring. I'm open to constructive criticism as always. You guys are very nice with your comments usually when I'm trying new stuff, and I appreciate that. So any criticism is welcome. Thank you. For our luxury camping accommodations, we threw a twin mattress in the back of this Pathfinder with all the seats folded down. Uh, my only complaint is that it was rather high up with my Mountaineer when you fold the seats down. Um, it's still fairly flat, so you have quite a bit of headroom to sit up. Um, wasn't a huge deal though when we had left the front seats open so we could sit in them and actually stretch out a little bit. Um, the actual camping sites were just Bureau of Land Management um, free camping areas. Basically, you can camp on any forest road that isn't um, restricted. It was fairly good conditions on the actual roads themselves, um, especially day number one, it was pretty clear. Um, you can actually see there wasn't even snow in certain parts. Oregon and Washington are kind of weird because they have so many different mountain ranges. You end up going through the high desert and then back up into high elevation mountains and then back into high desert, and you kind of do that a bunch of times. Um, so this trip you'll notice there's various clips where there's mountains and snow and then other clips where it's um, sort of deserty and, and not any snow at all. And of course, no matter where you go, people are entitled at Walmart. Cue this Equinox. I'm not really sure why you think that would be acceptable. This was the forest road that we camped off of for night number one. Um, it also happened to be the snowiest spot that we ended up staying. Um, the road itself had probably six inches to a foot of just straight snowy powder on it, but it wasn't too icy or anything. It, it had snowed fairly recently and it was really nice. I mean, all these trees, the ambiance had like a crazy winter wonderland vibe going on. We watched some X-Files while we were in the back of the SUV just for the, the complete uh, experience. So it was a really nice first day. I will admit, um, as we pull up to the actual spot here that's on the left, um, we were not technically supposed to park there overnight. We did find in the morning there was like a hand-painted sign that said no parking, but there was so much snow that there was no way we could have seen it. This was the next morning, um, and I'm realizing now the timestamp on this camera is totally whack. It's not June and it was not two in the afternoon. This was driving along Highway 2 uh, going eastbound, uh, and we end up going through Cooley City, um, Grand Cooley, and Electric City. Um, this is right near the Grand Coulee Dam, which I've heard of many times, but I didn't actually realize it was in Washington State and not that far away from where I live. So we ended up seeing it. Um, it it's a dam. It's really not that exciting, to be honest. But this whole area was very pretty, and all these rock formations and everything were actually really cool. This day highlighted the Pathfinder's capabilities pretty well. Um, there was a lot of twisty, turvy roads, a lot of uphill, a lot of heavy braking zones. Um, basically just something that would be really hard on a normal car. Um, and it did okay. I would never buy a Nissan because of the CVT transmissions. I just do not like them and they have reliability issues. Um, but in terms of a rental, it was very comfortable. Um, plenty of power going up hills. The seats were heated. I mean, nothing to complain about. And the traction control was able to turn off completely. So driving in the deep snow, it could let the tires slip just a little bit. That's one of my biggest pet peeves about my Jetta is that the traction control is not able to turn off completely. This is the Keller Ferry. Um, we were there for like 15 minutes waiting and nobody else showed up. So we're the only car on the ferry. A couple of other things I did really like about the Pathfinder, um, the automatic four-wheel drive worked pretty well. When I was kind of screwing around in the deeper snow, I could feel, you know, it going into four-wheel drive and, you know, helping to just sort of pull it forward. The other thing was the adaptive cruise control. I know that's on most modern cars at this point, but I thought it worked really well, and I was fairly surprised that it wasn't 
sensing cars in other lanes. There were some situations where I thought it would misread the, the situation and try and slow down for a truck that was in another lane or something, but it worked really well. This was the second evening. Um, this is the Hog Lake uh, Bureau of Land Management Campground, and it's totally free. Uh, it's just like the forest roads where you can basically find any spot to camp. Um, this had a little bit more of a designated camping area. Um, you'll notice we, we pull up to a couple different sites that have little fire pits. We were kind of trying to decide which one we wanted to go with. Um, it happened to be completely empty. There was nobody in the entire park, so we ended up getting the you know best pick of uh, you know, this slightly snowy, muddy campground, but it was very cool. And of course, car camping is basically cheating because you don't have to get out unless you have to pee. This was the spot we ended up choosing and this is just leaving for the uh, morning. And you can see that little fire pit that was there. This was the 20 minutes or so we were in Idaho, um, when we were in Lewiston, Idaho. Um, it's basically just right on the border with Washington, so we were popping right back into Washington after that. This next clip is just kind of following a theme I had going in other videos where truck drivers will do certain things to communicate with other drivers that sometimes people don't notice, like flash their lights or use their signals. I came up on this slower truck here and he actually flashes his headlights as I was about to initiate my pass just to kind of give me a, an extra signal that it's okay and it's clear ahead. At least that's what I took it as and I'm, I'm pretty sure that people would agree in the comments. Um, it just kind of gave me a couple extra seconds to speed up confidently and also for him to know that it's okay to pass him and that he knows I'm about to do that maneuver. So little subtle things like that can be really helpful. Obviously, I'm not gonna commit to the pass unless I can actually see, but it, it tells me that he knows what I'm doing and that it's you know probably an acceptable maneuver in that situation. And I did give him a couple little flashes of my hazard lights as a thank you after the pass was complete. I think this was the craziest road that we went on. It was Highway 129 South and Highway 3 South when we crossed over into Oregon. Uh, it was fairly snowy, icy, and very twisty, um, but most of the area had been plowed except for some select areas like this where it was fairly packed snow. Storytelling. That was amazing. Thank you. Oh, uh, what is your, uh, what do we call it? Fucking hooray. The fucking hooray. Well, oh, I do want to say, uh, this made me think of, it's weird that I did this because, uh, I'll do two. I'm going to do two, two quick ones. Okay, because one is really fucking depressing. Okay. Um, listen, I cannot. Well, okay.
This was a bit odd because apparently a gravel road was the main road between the highway that we were on and the interstate. I have kind of a hard time believing that, but that is what Google Maps said. So at this point we had stopped for dinner in Baker City and we were kind of looking for a spot to stop for the night and I had picked out a particular forest road on my map, which is what we pull off of here. However, it turned out to be a little bit sketchier than we thought and at one point we ended up driving over this basically ravine. It was like a drop off on both sides and very spooky and pretty foggy and we kind of got some bad vibes and we decided to turn around and find a different spot. And a couple miles up the road, we did find a spot. Um, there were actually a couple other people that had backed their cars up into little pullover areas along this road. So we were not the only ones. Um, it actually felt a little bit safer knowing that there were other people. You can kind of see that pickup truck right there. They waved hello, they were nice. Um, very snowy, but overall very pretty, and it turned out to be a pretty safe spot. This day was actually probably the worst uh, in terms of conditions because it was packed snow that was melting, so it was starting to get really slushy. And there were sections that were pretty packed and not, not too bad in terms of traction, like this part right here. Um, and then later on, there were parts that were getting hit with a little bit more sun, and it was just crappy. I was, the whole car was understeering really bad, and I was basically getting the worst traction that I was getting the entire trip. So this is an example of the pretty poor traction in the slush. This guy pulls over for me to pass, and at way slower than the corner speed, the SUV ends up just losing traction okay. all through the Let's corner. Let's throw the road. Um, do you want to go first? I, I don't Jesus. care. Do you want to go last? I don't care. Mine, mine's long and bad. Okay. And God. yours is... Mine's sad, but... Hopeful. Interesting. Yeah. Like a... Yeah. And just a few miles later, the roads were completely clear again and the snow um, started to dwindle, basically back to being desert. This is one of my favorite sections coming up. This was the Painted Hills, um, and there's a couple different areas. There's a Painted Hills National Monument and then also some other overlook kind of area. There's two different, two different spots if you Google it. Um, but this was the Painted Hills overlook near Mitchell, Oregon, and um, basically just some very cool covered rocks, and it was like 60 degrees Fahrenheit here, and this is the same day as that snow this morning where it was like 25, so really weird going from winter wonderland to practically spring or summer time weather. This was just a cool little off-road area near the Painted Hills that we pulled over for lunch. And it wasn't a difficult trail by any means, but it was very scenic. And um, again, it was just warm and sunny. It was, it was nice to get some summertime vibes. Thanks for watching and let me know if you'd like to see videos like this in the future.